Let's learn logarithms. If we complete an addition problem that we'd like to undo, what's our move? Subtraction, right? Subtraction is the inverse operation to addition. If we have an exponent that we'd like to undo, we're going to use its inverse operation, logarithms. Let's say we use an exponent to do 10 to the third equals 1,000. We could undo that by saying that the log base 10 of 1,000 equals 3. Logarithms have a base and a number. And the answer is, what exponent do I need to raise the base to to reach the number? What's the log base 5 of 25? It's 2, because 5 to the second power is 25. What's the log base 2 of 16? It's 4, because 2 to the fourth is 16. Most commonly used logarithm is log base 10. In fact, if you don't see a base, as with the log button on your calculator, it's assumed the base is 10. The use of logarithms was first publicly put forward by Scottish mathematician John Napier in 1614. He coined the term logarithmos from the Greek logos, meaning ratio or proportion, and arithmos, meaning number, ratio number. So why do we use logarithms? Well, in algebra, they can help us solve problems like this one, where the variable is in the exponent. Logarithmic scales show up in other places, too. The Richter scale, used to measure earthquakes, is not on a linear scale. Each time you go up one notch on the Richter scale, say from 5 to 6, the earthquake has actually gotten 10 times stronger. This is important because it helps us quickly gauge how serious the situation is. If I tell you there's a magnitude 2 million earthquake coming, and you have to get your phone out and say, is that a lot? That's not great. Another place you'll see a logarithmic scale is with decibels, which measure how loud a sound is. A sound that measures 40 decibels is not twice as loud as 20 decibels. It's 10 times louder. Other places you'll see logarithmic scales include the pH scale, which measures acidity, and the parent magnitude, which measures the brightness of stars. Till next time.